We will have the Pledge of Allegiance by our Vice President Clerk. Ready to begin? I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now observe a moment of silence. Thank you. Item number one, adoption of the agenda. No changes, Mr. Ferris. Okay, we have no changes to the menu. Uh, the, uh, so we will adopt the agenda as presented. So I will um, take note, I think we are making history this evening. This is the longest agenda I have seen in my entire school board career. <laughs> so having said that, I would like for us to be a little bit strategic in how we proceed. Uh, we have a lot of important topics, a lot of important information to cover tonight. We don't want to slight anything, but we do want to make good use of our time. So what I'm going to recommend to the board is uh, at points during the agenda, I will solicit a motion on items grouped together unless there is a, an objection. We will then <coughs> uh, allow discussion on those items all together. So if you have comments, you can, you can make them. If, um, and then we will vote as a block on those items. Um, if, if when we move those items, if you have an objection or a concern about a specific item that you want to pull out, we can do that but I think this will allow us to move more quickly. Uh, we don't want to prevent anyone from speaking to any of these items though. So, if you know there's something on tonight's agenda that you would like to address, you want to be aware of, um, please, it uh, uh, looks like all the, I think it looks like maybe there's still some agendas back here. Look over the agenda so you know where it is on the agenda so when we come to that block, you can identify that that's the block we're talking about. We don't want anybody to miss an opportunity because they got lost in the shuffle. Uh, like I say, a lot of important work. This isn't, a, this isn't an effort to slight anything or anybody, but maybe get home in time to go to work tomorrow morning. So having said that, we will uh, move to the uh, approval of the minutes, and if there are no corrections, they will and approved as presented, and move to a public hearing. Mr. Delbeck. It'll be the public hearing for the annual budget plan and the annual service plan for 23-24 school year for the Sierra Sands SELPA. President Ferris, members of the board, Superintendent Ostash, Community members, we're here for, this is our first reading. It's the public hearing for the annual budget plan and the annual service plan for the 2023-24 school year for Sierra San Selpa. Background information, Assembly Bill 602 requires special education local plan areas, SELPA as we call them, to submit an annual budget plan and annual service plan for adoption after a public hearing of the board. As required in Ed Code section, 56205. Together, these plans must identify expected expenditures and include a description of services, the physical location of these services, and must determine that all individuals with exceptional needs are being met as specified in their individual educational plan or IEP. The SELPA budget and service plan will be brought to the board for adoption on May 18th, 2023. Current considerations. According to the governance and policy making process established within Sierra San Selpa, the local plan area for special education completion of the process will be documented by evidence that a public hearing was held before the adoption of the annual budget plan and annual service plan. The special education services provided by Sierra San Selpa are supported through a combination of these special education state and federal categoric 
categorical funding, the expenditure of which is documented in these plans. It is recommended that the board conduct a public hearing on the annual budget plan and the annual service plan for the 2023 and 2024 school year. So I will open the public hearing at 7.08. Anyone like to speak to this issue? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing at 7.08 and 15 seconds. <laughs> that brings us to educational or reports and communications. Uh, looks like a student member is not here. Do we have a student member's report? We do. I can get we we do. I'll, I'll start off with that. Murray Middle School. A student just finished their final dance known as the Touch of Class. On Wednesday, the ASB students served a fancy lunch to former ASB students, staff, and district personnel. In addition, the kitchen staff made a jamming jambalaya that the whole school loved. Students dressed in their finest on Friday and danced the night away while the hawkers ran a great photo booth, booth for the students. Students finished their final variety show and it ended in a touching ceremony honoring Mr. Tuttle and his sister who passed away after a vehicular collision on Highway 395. Students were even willing to stay three minutes after the bell in thoughtful silence as the event concluded. Our school family was again struck with grief due to the passing of one of our teacher's children. She has bravely reached out to others and is hoping to give back to the community in a way the, to prevent similar tragedies. While difficulties occur, while difficulties occur, hope also blooms, and the BHS National Honor Society captured this sentiment by helping those who follow after and giving a great presentation to many of our honors and CJSF students. Thank you students for leading endeavors to help others. This Saturday, Murray gets to host the first annual Aut Autism Awareness Walk. Please join us from 9 to 11 a.m. to join the families and partake in the vendors at a fun community event. The Junior Olympics just finished last Saturday. Several hundred students collected more than 600 scores and a variety of events. While it was mostly SSUSD students, several schools from the surrounding area competed. As a district, we get to send more than 130 finalists to compete at the county level on April 29th, while they will compete in almost 200 events. Go Mustangs. Uh, James Monroe High School. Spring has sprung at James Monroe. We are in full swing preparing for statewide assessments starting April 25th. Using a new approach, teachers in their grade level team selected students for their final advisory. The next few weeks of advisory will be spent in preparation for testing. The teachers will review testing strategies, provide opportunities for practice tests, review key vocabulary, and work on mindfulness exercises to get students in a positive and stress-free mindset. This week, we started Tardy Wars to reward classes of students with the lowest percentage of tardies, encouraging students to get to class on time. Also, if you're on campus, keep an eye out for baby ducks. They might be tiny, but they can earn you a sweet treat. This weekend, quite a few Tigers will be representing James Monroe in the Junior Olympics. And next week is our final dance of the school year and saved by the bell day for showing some spirit. While the school year is winding down, the Tigers continue to move ahead, working hard and playing hard, preparing for the transition to the next school year. Mesquite High School, fourth quarter is passing by so quickly. We have had a busy month at Mesquite. Before spring break, we had representatives from Syracuse Community College give a presentation to our students regarding the programs they offer, their administration's process, and financial aid opportunities available to students. Students kicked off spring break with our annual Spring Fling, the Friday before spring break. Students and staff participated in volleyball, flag football, cornhole, and other various lawn games. It doesn't say who won, but. <laughs> Edie Condi from Ridgecrest Regional Hospital gave a presentation to students interested in their CNA program. We had over 30 students attend and have many interviews this week. We had a successful prom at the USO building on April 15th. The theme was The Great Gatsby, and our colors were white and gold. Food was served and included in the price of the ticket. Prom was from 7 to 10, 
and about 50 students attended. Dylan Wagner was, cre was crowned king and Olivia Loya was crowned queen. We have had six additional graduates, bringing this year's total to 30, uh, Burroughs High School. It is, it is an exciting month for Burroughs students. ASB campaign week started on the 3rd and ended with the elections on the 6th. On the 5th, students were encouraged to wear blue in support of autism awareness. We also had denim, denim day on the 14th, and there will be dodgeball and workout day on the 28th. Prom will be on the 22nd, and the theme is Endless Serenity, featuring pinks, golds, cherry blossoms, and butterflies. Top six on prom court has been announced. The king and queen will be announced at the dance. There was also a prom proposal competition with the winner receiving two free tickets to the dance. To go along with the prom, there will be a pretty and pink spirit day tomorrow. On the 14th, the drama department held a Shakespeare Festival contest where contestants performed Shakespeare scenes and portrayed characters. Band, choir, and orchestra will, will perform at Disneyland on the 28th, following a band concert at Burroughs High School on the 27th. Track and field, baseball, swimming, golf, softball, and boys tennis are at the height of their, competi uh, of their competitive season and we wish them luck as they make their way through league matches. CAA SPP testing for juniors was on Tuesday and Thursday of last week and this week. The blood drive will be on Monday next week. The upcoming month will, be also, will also be very busy, especially for seniors with preparations for graduation underway and AP exams at the beginning of May. That concludes the student member report. Thank you, Mr. Scott. <clears throat> that brings us to reports from members of the board. Mr. Uh, yeah, I'll just uh, briefly, um, it's been a crazy busy uh, time. Um, I'll, I think I'll probably wait on some comments until an item later, but we had a you know, great interview process uh, to select our new superintendent and the um, you know, like I said, I'll wait for a little bit on that, but the, the applicants were phenomenal. Everybody did a great job, and uh, really appreciate everybody for, you know, putting it out there and, and, and doing, doing their best to be a part of our future. Um, and then the, uh, I think we all attended the R uh, Richmond Groundbreaking, uh, which was another great event. Um, I'm sure others will have more to say, but uh, just, just, uh, I'm thrilled with the direction that things are going in this district. There are so many good things happening that it's, uh, it, it's, it's great to be a part of. Thanks. Mm -hmm. On March uh, 11th through the 14th, Dr. Ostash and I attended the uh, annual Spring Nathas Conference. Um, one, one, of the interesting, one of the interesting things I found out there was Bernie, Senator Bernie Sanders recently introduced the uh, Pay Teachers Act of 2023, uh, which uh, one of the main points would increase uh, beginning teacher salary to $60,000, which would actually be awesome. Uh, the, the same bill would double the impact basic support payment under Section uh, 7003, but uh, this, the same bill kind of left us out of it, our subset um, on the federal impact of lands, and this has kind of been a historical issue that we've always kind of been left out of things. Um, obviously, NAFIS organization understands our issues and they're working on a bipartisan bill to fully fund basic support, including our CRSAN subset group. Um, this is obviously a prime example of why we attend this conference in Washington, D.C., because we always seem to get the short end sometimes. Uh, we were able to walk the hill. We met with uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein, Feinstein's staff and uh, Speaker of the House uh, Kevin McCarthy's staff. Uh, it's just kind of unfortunate that their break was at the same time we were there. It's kind of hard for to line up sometimes. We, we just guesstimate as to when they're going to be in session when they set up the NAFIS. Um, I think Dr. Ostash is going to talk about our meetings with them. Overall, it's a great conference, and we had some good face-to-face -face time with the staffers. So, Thank you. Uh, I, the only thing I would add to any of that is that uh, it's certainly exciting to uh, – visit the open houses and see the exciting things that are going on in our classrooms. Uh, and uh, it's clear that uh, folks are working really hard to meet the needs of our students.
That brings us to uh, superintendent's report, Dr. Ostash. Thank you, Mr. Ferris, and good evening, everyone. Our att attendance report month seven enrollment is 5,053 students. Last year this time was 5,038, so we're still up about 15 students. I'd like to congratulate Mr. Rockwell on his election to serve as a delegate for the California School Boards Association. He'll represent us in our region and attend a couple meetings a year. And as I've highlighted in several of our previous meetings, it's great to have the active engagement of our board. Uh, Mr. Ferris is actually a director for our region and represents us at the state level. And so to have that kind of um, representation uh, regionally and, and at, at the state by Sierra Sands uh, makes a huge difference for advocating for things that matter to us, local control being one of the primary ones. Uh, I wanna highlight that the open enrollment information went out on Monday. There was a parent square that went to all parents and guardians about that uh, annual open enrollment opportunity. It provides a window uh, from May 1 to May 15 each year for parents to request attendance at a school of their choice for the following year. I wanted to highlight, um, there's been some mention of this in the past. This is an exciting um, prospect. Um, we are looking at some potential project upgrades at the Parker Performing Arts Center. We have a great thriving program in the arts, um, both music and performing theater arts and um, with the improvements that we've been able to make with some of the, uh, well, some of it was repair from earthquake, but lighting in the back, uh, new air handlers, new air conditioning, but we have the arts and music instructional block grant, we call it the AMM grant, and we're looking to invest some of those dollars. So yesterday we held a meeting, a collaborative style meeting with um, several of our uh, teaching faculty at Burroughs who use the Performing Arts Center and other employees, um, you know, our maintenance and our construction and uh, admin and such. And so about 10 of us met to, to go over some, uh, Donnie Morrison has helped uh, leading the effort to get quotes and bids and scope of work, um, probably first and foremost looking at like audio visual upgrades, uh, which is much needed for our students. And then if possible, extending that scope of work to include stage lighting. So we're really excited about um, collaborating with all the right people who uh, are student focused and making sure we get the right equipment in there and using these one-time dollars in a way that'll um, make a substantial improvement um, for our programs for the, for the coming years and hopefully the coming decades. Um, as was mentioned, really exciting, the groundbreaking, ground, groundbreaking ceremony at Richmond. We had about 100 guests. Uh, we were out there, the weather was perfect. Um, the very next day well, <laughs> was pretty, <sc> <laughs> it was kind of, wow, thank God we had it on Monday. Um, we had, like I said, we had 100 guests, hands down the highlight, I think, of the event. Um, and you'll see kind of some neat pictures later on, uh, but where the students, the Richmond students led us in the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anth Anthem, and they did an amazing job. Um, and the, ev the, the event was really, really nice. We had some great speakers, and I was appreciative of the support and all the partners who um, are kind of put this all in alignment. But I also want to highlight, um, because everything is an advocacy opportunity, everything is, a, is an opportunity to deepen um, you know, the awareness and advocate for our needs. And so after the event, um, I wanna thank uh, our Assistant Superintendent of Business Services, Pam Smith, and our Director of Construction, Randy Coit, um, because they really helped lead uh, for several hours a um, tours through all of our school sites that are on uh, military lands. And um, we had some very important people who visited us uh, to attend the groundbreaking from the Office of Local Defense and Community um, Part Cooperation, we call it OLDCC, which is the Department of, uh, of Defense program that provides these 80% grant funds to build or modernize schools. We also had the executive officer from the State of California um, Office of um, Public School Construction, OPSC. And so Lisa Silverman and the Chief Financial Officer, Michael Watanabe, they were all here for the groundbreaking. and so. They toured through all the different schools who have been uh, either um, built new or modernized by the OLDCC grants or are on the docket to, to be. And I emphasized at the groundbreaking, and I know that Mr. Ferris did too, that I kind of consider Richmond to be kind of a middle child. You know, it's really the third of hopefully a family of five because we have five schools that are eligible for those 80% grants. Uh, the first of the two that have been done with those grants are Murray and, Bur and Burroughs High School. 
Marin Middle School and Burroughs High School. Richmond is our third school. It's taken about four years to get where we are. And then um, the next two schools on the list for OLDCC are Pierce Elementary School and Buick. And it's important to always keep in the front of our minds that um, the 80% grant requires the other 20%. And 20% of a big number is a big number. And so when you build um, Richmond Elementary School at over $90 million and you need 20% of $90 million, that, um, in, that, in that case, it, it fully depletes our capital uh, funds. And so we are very strategically aligning ourselves so that we will have that 20% for Pierce and Buick. Pierce is already uh, approved to receive a recommendation or, or a build strategy, and we've been dragging our feet on that because we don't yet have the strategy for the 20% but we had an incredibly creative uh, conversation with the executives from OPSC and OLDCC, and, um, and, then, and we're very confident that we are building a strategy um, from some very high level folks um, where we're putting those funds together. And so more information about that, but I wanna keep that front of mind uh, for, for us. I want to highlight um, Mr. Delbick has, um, is leading a lot of uh, great events in our uh, SELPA department. A few things, our Eastern Sierra Walk for Autism Awareness is this Saturday, uh, April 22nd at Murray Middle School, and I'd like to invite anyone in the community to come out and participate in that event. Um, Jason Harper, our alternate dispute resolution specialist, is coming uh, April 26th and 27th and doing some great work in our, uh, in our district and in our SELPA. And our third annual SELPA uh, Advisory Committee Student Art Showcase started today and goes uh, to May 25th. And so we invite people to come by and check out the student artwork at the um, Sierra Vista Center. As Mr. Scott mentioned, um, we did attend the, the NAFIS conference, the National Association of Federally Impacted Schools. Um, and he highlighted some of the achievements and some of the advocacy efforts happening for impact aid. But when we were in Speaker McCarthy's office and talking with their senior um, staffers, it was an opportunity for us to crosswalk again the OLDCC effort and to sort of appeal to um, Speaker McCarthy, who has been a tremendous advocate for Sierra Sands in many, many ways, uh, notably with uh, Impact Aid and um, the OLDCC funding project, which goes back over a decade ago. And, you know, there were some risk factors back then that, that could have uh, knocked Sierra Sands out uh, because of its heavy, heavy uh, civilian composition of uh, students and, and workforce and not high on the military connected. And, um, and so in, there's just an, a multitude of ways that um, Congressman and now Speaker McCarthy has championed Sierra Sands. And so we continue that advocacy to see, again, if there are ways that uh, can help with this 20% you know, need for these future projects with Pierce and Buick. And so um, their staff was extremely receptive. And um, again, we have many different folks in different areas really helping uh, advocate for us. And I'll finish by highlighting uh, some fun things. Um, I like to schedule visits in classrooms. I've been able to go uh, in the last couple weeks, been to Richmond and Pierce and Mesquite and Las Flores. and. The highlight, of course, is seeing the students in action, but what's fun is that I learn a lot about myself when I'm on an elementary campus, like that I'm tall and that I'm fat <laughs> and that I look like the rock and that I'm apparently the husband of most of our principals. <laughs> and, I, you know, and I told the first grader who was looking up at me, I was like, man, I feel like I'm sucking it in. I'm fat? I'm like, but anyways, it's, it's really fun to, to learn a lot about myself when I'm going through those classrooms. Um, I also want to highlight that I did enjoy, there, it was mentioned in the report about Touch a Class. Um, Mrs. Campbell, one of our board members, and I um, hung out at the Touch a Class luncheon. The ASB director there, Robin Zern, always does a great job in, in really um, inspiring the students to do, I mean, they're all dressed up and, and they serve us, and it was just, it was really, really neat, and we enjoyed that. And I will finish that we ha are conducting open houses and we'll, we'll finish those next week. We had open houses this week on the 17th at Las Flores and Gateway Elementary Schools, on the 18th at Marie Monroe uh, Middle Schools, um, yesterday Fowler and Inyo Kern, and then next week on the 25th, Richmond and Pierce. And I just want to express appreciation to the teachers and the staff because I know that um, 
back to school nights and open houses make for a really long day and make for an interesting morning the next morning. And I thank you for that. So that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Ostash. That brings us to item number four, report to the Board of Trustees by the Desert Area Teachers Association. Ms. Poole. Good, good evening. Uh, President Ferris, members of the board, Superintendent Ostash, community uh, peers, and everybody else who's cool. Um, I <laughs> Does that mean everybody else that you mentioned was not cool? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um, I wanted to begin, I started watching Mrs. Maisel again that last season dropped, I'm pretty excited, and I had this really fabulous and wildly funny monologue all written out, but since we're faced with the longest agenda in school board history, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm ditching it. Um, you're just gonna have to watch me on my HBO special. There'll be a fee. Um, okay, so some time ago, uh, it was second semester, but I, I don't really remember much more about the date. January, February, I don't really remember. Data's exec board was invited to a meeting um, at the district office with the gentleman, Mr. Volker, I think, who was um, the representative of the agency that was on the uh, searching for a new um, superintendent. And it was short notice, but we all showed up and we felt really good. We were asked questions, what are we looking for? You know, what would we like to see in a superintendent? Um, and we left with the gentleman saying, we're gonna be seeing more of you, we're gonna have more meetings. Um, and then we all went back to teaching and doing what we do. And every now and then I'd have the thought, I thought there were gonna be more meetings. So it was a real surprise when we got the email um, from our current superintendent, which feels weird to say, um, announcing that we have a new superintendent. And we felt uh, it was out of the blue for us because we had all been completely excluded and we were texting did you were you the one did you get called in so um, it wasn't a great it wasn't a great feeling um, however um, we are very open and ex uh, to working with our new superintendent mrs. cope was kind enough to introduce me to her he seems very warm and she's seen me on YouTube so I'm I'm on board um, but it, it wasn't it wasn't great, but and we're all very sad, as I've said before, to see um, Dr. Ostash go. But we're very much looking forward to uh, to the new superintendent. So, um, okay, it's April. If it's April, it must be testing, and so the testing window is wide open. And we just finished up today at uh, at Burroughs, and I always found it funny that at where the big kids are. In their four years at Burroughs, they're tested once. And these are the kids who can really start to imagine what life is looking at, looking like beyond the classroom. But our third graders, our fifth graders, who you know, don't always know what the end of the week is gonna look like, right? They're getting tested constantly. And uh, to quote somebody I've heard before, there's a steady drumbeat of testing that's really frustrating. Um, and I say this a lot, uh, elementary teachers have said, you know, I don't really have time to teach because I'm testing, testing. And I, I uh, taught English for a long time and I always say we should support our statements. And so um, Ms. McCoy, Kathy McCoy, printed all these out and we were gonna, I'm gonna hand them out to you. And what it is, is a, she broke down the schedule Um, anyway, just to, to, and this page is uh, September, October. It goes on and on and on. And she's got um, second grade in there, all of them, K to five, I believe. So something to take a, a look at. And so while this is always in our minds, especially now, I got uh, my copy of the NEA today that all the data members get, I believe. And the cover story is how do standardized tests fail students? So of course I flipped it open. Um, 
And when I talked to Dr. Ostash on Tuesday, I told him, I've only read the title, I haven't read the article, but I've, <coughs> I've since sat down and, and read it. And like a good reader, I've got it all marked up. So the thing that they're really emphasizing here is uh, this idea of a project-based test, right? And so that when a student is showing what they know, they're not, they're not limited by how are they expressing that in words, right? Which is important, but this is a way for kids to do projects and really do what most of us in the classroom are doing, right? Which is trying different ways to get them engaged and they're having fun, they're interacting with their peers and they're learning, right? In a way that's kind of subtle, the way most of us learn. Um, let's see, so one of the quotes that really got me we want to capture all of the things that show student learning and achievement, not just this torturously narrow vision that is embedded in the current system. Where in the data is student engagement, their sense of belonging, performing arts, or development of civic competencies? Uh, and then, but educate, uh, on a standardized test, there's only one right answer. Every other answer is wrong. But educators know when students are engaged in authentic and meaningful tasks, they can arrive at answers that are not entirely wrong or entirely right, which is a conversation I have with my juniors when uh, the state test, you're scoring a one or a two. So if you mess up in even a teensy bit, you're down to 50%. Um, and there's no, hey, I see where you're going here and this makes sense, but you're kind of losing it here. Man, I get that we need to have these baseline tests. I don't think any of us are opposed to that. Uh, we like to know where we're, where our kids are and, and we want to do our best job. But I think that what we need to start considering is when we're giving tests so much and we're just hitting them over the head with it, we're not really testing their knowledge anymore and we're not allowing teachers to do what they do best. And if you think about elementary teachers, they're with those kids, they don't leave. Those kids don't leave. <laughs> they, so good for y'all. But they know those kids, they know those kids so well. I mean, we do, it's secondary. They get to know those kids and they know what, what they need. And when, when this Tuesday, things weren't working well. Wednesday, it all came together. And I think that if we work together, and this is about a, um, it's someplace I think in Michigan, dum, dum, dum. Uh, Massachusetts, starts with an M, um, how they're working together and it's the, the um, union is working with the um, school districts and the union, because I've said before, and we all know, we all have the same goal. And so I think if we started looking at testing as a way to really help kids be their best, I, I, think, we would, um, I think we would all be happier and kids might start to like school a little bit more and if they're liking school and being treated like kids and not little robots, maybe their behavior is gonna get a little better and it's just gonna be, um, it's just gonna be nicer for all of us. So thank you. Thank you. Next, we go to item five, report to the Board of Trustees from the California School Employees Association. Hello, school board president, board members, superintendent Dr. Ostash, staff and community. I feel like every month I stand here and I'm stating the same stuff over and over. We have a staff shortage, we continue to lose valuable employees, mainly due to our subpar pay, but also being overworked. We are far from being competitive with fast food, which is sad. Not that we don't need our fast food workers, but what we really need are hardworking, dedicated employees here working with our children. Our staff is way overworked due to being short staffed. They are way underpaid for the job that they do day in and day out. It's hard for me as our union president to continue to justify them staying here. I often get emails from my members asking if we're getting a raise this year. I tell them that that is the hopes while we are in negotiations. Up until last year, we had not seen any type of raise on our pay scale in four years besides the minimum wage increases. So now I have members that are making less than a dollar more than someone just starting. We have got to put some work into our pay scale or we will continue to lose people and not be able to hire new people if we are not even competitive with fast food. Looking at data that CSEA has gathered, our classified staff is paid at a way lower percentage than other districts com comparable to ours. 
our pay scale really needs work. I read this thing online and it stated paraprofessionals are indispensable. They are not simply an addition, but rather an essential component to the success of students. They provide the backbone of support and enhancement to a student's learning journey. And I absolutely believe that is true. But that can be said about any of your classified workers. You have hardworking, dedicated staff that are seriously getting burnt out due to being overworked and underpaid. Your classified staff is not feeling very appreciated. Since we have received our proposal from the district in March, I get emails almost every other day asking how negotiations are going. Unfortunately, we have not started. Although we do have a tentative date set, my members are frustrated and feel like we get put on the back burner. We look forward to working with the district to come up with a solution for our subpar pay scale in hopes of retaining the staff we do have and getting people to want to come and work for the district. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to item number six, communications from the public. The board will provide time during the discussion of each agenda item for the members of the public to comment. But at this time, members of the public may address the board on an item that is not on the agenda. Comments should relate to items of public interest within the board's jurisdiction. The law prohibits the board from taking action on items that are not on the agenda, but if appropriate, your comments will be referred to staff for response. When addressing the board, please state your name at the podium and limit your remarks to three minutes. In accordance with the board bylaws, the board will limit the total time of public input to 30 minutes. Those wishing to address the board beyond that 30 minute time limit may do so at the end of the scheduled meeting agenda. So we open public comment at 7.39. My name is Kathy McCoy, I'm a teacher at Pierce. Um, I put together those assessment lists because we have, as teachers, been saying there's too much, there's too much, there's too much. We're losing teaching time because we're doing these assessments and we felt that this wasn't something that was being taken seriously as far as understanding how much of our teaching time we're losing. So I went through each of the grade levels pacing guides, um, curriculum maps, and I wrote down every assessment. I had them checked by members at each grade level to be sure that I had gotten them all and that this was what they actually were being asked to do. And it is, this does not include um, other progress monitoring checks that we do through our collaboration and intervention groups, which we are um, expected to do for at least a half an hour, four days a week, where we split the kids up into groups based on their needs, which is fabulous. But then we are required to do progress monitoring on that. So in some weeks, it's three days of teaching something and one day of I'm assessing which is extra assessment. Um, my kids in my classroom, and um, I believe that my co-teachers will agree with me, the kids are tested out. They don't care. My, my kids are nine, <laughs> they're in third grade. When I say, and we're gonna show what we know, we're gonna go ahead and take a CFA, I'd like you to do your best work, make sure you're reading carefully, and they're all B. Uh, 59. I, they, they, don't, they don't take them seriously, which I think then when we take our state testing, that's not accurately showing what they know because it is yet one more test. And they're nine and they don't care. I mean, as much as I might tell them, I really need you to do your best because we're showing what we've learned this year. You've done so much. We want people to see that and celebrate it. I, they're nine. They're thinking about going out to recess and playing with their friends and not getting out their Chromebook to take yet another assessment. So we put this together in the hopes that maybe having seen this in a different format rather than as a calendar, this is something that could be looked at and um, maybe modified some because this does not count other assessments that I myself might prepare and think my students might need so I can see where they're at. This is all, this is all mandated. Um, I'm required to show that I've done these things. And um, that doesn't make me feel like I am a professional who knows what I'm doing. That makes me feel like someone is watching what I'm doing and making sure that I'm checking boxes. And my kids aren't boxes, they're human beings. And um, I, I would really like to see a change here. We've been asking for a long time. So maybe, maybe, maybe this year it'll happen. Thank you. Thank you.
I'm a little nervous already, wow. Uh, President Ferris, members of the board, and uh, Superintendent Ostash, thank you guys for the time. My name's Brandon Temple. I'm one of the owners of 760 and High Desert Fitness, and looks like you guys are a little stressed out. You know what's great for stress, though? Uh, a little bit cheesy, I know, but it seems so tense in here. Um, we're gonna be hosting a free admission week over at 760 Fitness for all SSUSD teachers, um, whether that be secondary teachers, excuse me if I get that terminology wrong, on Saturday, the 13th, we're gonna be doing a demo class day. So 30 minutes of our most popular classes, back to back to back with about uh, 15 minutes in between. We're gonna be having coffee and fruits and maybe donuts, but don't tell anybody. It's a gym after all, uh, outside of our group fitness room so that hopefully during this time of um, you know testing and everything like that, it'll be something fun to do. Again, that's free admission for the entire week. If you do sign up uh, throughout that week, you'll get a great special. Just ask the front desk about it. Um, on the other side of things, at our other location, our personal training and small group uh, studio, we'll also be offering a free week for the classes. Our classes range anywhere from super seniors for those with limited uh, mobility, and we have like building balance, total tone, a little faster paced class, more specialty type of, type of items there. So hopefully we see you. I'll be sticking around afterwards. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please, please let me know. Other than that, thank you guys so much and have a good evening. Thank you. I, I knew that was not gonna go unnoticed. <laughs> good evening, the board. Uh, this is Marie Andrews. I'm a driver with Sierra Sands and I'm fed up and I'm dead tired. I literally parked my bus at 6.15 after starting at five o'clock this morning. We had hardly any breaks and it's just, four months ago you said, oh, we've got 11 drivers who've signed on. We, the drivers, looked at ourselves and said, yeah, if one passes it, that would be lucky. Well, three are in training. However, there's three of us that are planning on retiring this year. One has just quit and two have just applied for other jobs that pay a lot more. So you're gonna be out of drivers. Also, we get ignored completely. Um, we had, I drove for Bakersfield Superintendent of Schools, and while I was there, they had a driver appreciation day with a huge barbecue and the whole bit. Over here that one year, we got cold burrito, breakfast burritos, <laughs> okay? And then when the all hands comes up, the only thing we get notice is one little flip picture of, of a school bus. So anyway, there's, we have no loyalty really to the school district anymore. We're loyal to ourselves. The reason we're showing up is to help each other. And the new electric buses, the two of them, there's only one driver who wants to drive them. And she doesn't really, she's stressed out by it because when it starts dropping down to 8% and you turn on the air conditioner, you're gonna lose all your power and you're gonna have to be towed. So you have the one bus she uses in the morning, she plugs it in and takes the second bus out for the afternoon run because it doesn't have enough range to cover the runs. And like I said, none of us really want to drive it because it's stressful enough to worry about gas tank, but at least you can pull in somewhere to get fuel. This, if you're stuck, you gotta have a tow truck come and get you. But anyway, basically we're just tired and fed up. Uh, Husperia School District, I talked to them, they get $23 an hour is their starting salary. Bakersfield is also in that pay range. The other thing that happened was the, um, the, uh, the money we were supposed to get for working during the pandemic. First it said, oh, you're gonna get $1,000. Well, that's okay, then it was 700. Then it was, well, that 700 is going to be doled out at 150 a month, and you have to be here every day for that. Phoenix, that's why we turned it down. That was basically kicking it back and saying, shove it. Um, Phoenix, Arizona, they gave the drivers a $5,000 bonus, no strings attached. The only catch was they had to stay and not retire until school year was out in June. So, like I said, we get ignored and forgotten. Uh, instead of worrying about buses, Right now, I think you should be worried about bicycle routes because you're not gonna have any drivers in the next year or so, I believe, to drive the buses. No one wants to drive them when you can make more money on the bus, or rather on the base. You have to have a clean driving record. You have to pass uh, all the first aid test. And also, the other funny thing is people say, oh, you're driving these precious cargo. No, kids are actually a Ponzi scheme. You're sinking money into them with the hope that they eventually, when they get older, will pay it back. The money, the real money, is in garbage. The city makes lots of money in garbage, and the bus, the truck drivers for them make 25 an hour starting. So it just depends where your values are. They're not in the kids, and they're not in transportation. Thank you. And I'm gonna go home and go to bed.
Thank you. Marie is a tough act, tough act to follow. All right, hello everyone. I'm Claire Galvin. I am a clerk. I've been a clerk for the past six or seven years. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, we're having a staffing crisis, and I'm not sure that you guys fully grasp why this is happening. We're watching our coworkers flee from here like rats jumping off a sinking ship, leaving the rest of us to wonder if we're just too stupid or too scared to jump with them. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> I love my job. I love my coworkers. I love my school site. I love it. But... I'm always on the lookout for a new job outside of the school district because I simply can't afford to keep working here. Rents are being raised, prices of food and other necessities are going up, and the few of us who are able to have a savings account have to keep dipping in there to pay for things like taxes or tires. I'm 27, and I can't even consider the possibility of starting a family because a monthly payment on a house is as much as my check. My biggest worry in life shouldn't be the fact that I'm one paycheck away from being homeless or the fact that I will never be able to retire. We should feel happy and proud to work in education, but right now the majority of us feel trapped, overworked, and taken advantage of. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Alice Gilmartin, this is my 22nd year teaching for Sierra Sands. And I wasn't planning on coming to this board meeting until I saw the board packet. I see that the district will be paying the new superintendent $225,000 a year, close to a quarter million dollars. However, I'm not here to discuss the merits of that contract. As a taxpayer, mother of a Sierra Sand student, and a teacher, I honestly hope the district will get its money's worth. What does concern me is how much the district is currently paying its certificated and classified employees. Data members received an update on April 2nd that the district has 13% new ongoing monies for this year, 22-23, and the expectation of an additional 8% new ongoing monies for next year. Yet, the district has offered teachers a 3% on-schedule raise with a 2% off-schedule bonus, which is what you gave us last time, and many classified staff, as we've heard, are paid a rate less than what they can make at Starbucks. The district's dedicated, hardworking employees are tired. They are tired of coming to work every day to perform their duties to the highest standards while also performing the duties of absent employees because the district has failed to provide substitutes. Emails about how grateful administrators are that we are all team players are not enough. We are team players for showing up and doing the jobs the district has hired us to do. It is time for the district to exchange platitudes for dollars. Your loyal employees deserve better. Thank you. All right. Hello, my name is Sindel Wood, also formerly known as Sindel Barnes, daughter to Mr. Barnes and Mrs. Barnes. You guys have pretty much seen me grow up throughout all the years. Um, I recently became a paraprofessional about almost four years ago. I started at Gateway and then came to Murray Middle School and learned to love my class. Throughout my class, I have learned so much. That is so important. I've learned how to take care of my own child even better than I ever have known before. Being a para is more than just loving a student and teaching a student. It's taking care of everything that they need. With the cutting of the hours of the paraprofessionals and some of the other classified staff, you are taking away some of the support and care that we can provide. It is quite saddening how this is going to affect our students. At Murray Middle School, our starting time is 7.15. They're saying that we are cutting down to starting at eight o'clock. It is not known, but our students go to advisory at 715. And right now we have four paras inside the Murray Autism Room. Last year, we were split up into advisories for three groups. So we needed three paras at 715 to start the day to go to the advisory with the kids. At the end of the day, 
We are needed for groups. We are needed for bus transportation, home transportation, and whatever use of pickup that the parents or the student need. It is unfortunate that you know the shortening of hours has happened, but I am pleased begging that you guys change this decision as it will negatively impact our students, not just at Murray Middle School, but at Burroughs, at the elementary schools, everywhere. These students need these services, and if you take away the services, their education and their scheduling and everything that they need, especially autism and you know anything, they're very OCD and sometimes they're very schedule oriented. You take it away, they could go a little crazy, but that's okay, we still love them. But I'm just asking that you guys rethink the um, hour changes and please just do it in the best interest of the students because that's what matters. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Elizabeth Slifer, and I'm not only up here as a para, but I'm up here as a parent. My child is at Murray. He's being underserved because of a lack of staff. I'm underserving my students because we're trying to handle so many at one time when we have people out sick, we have people out for surgery, whatever, it doesn't matter. We are underserving our students. It's not okay. This change in schedules and everything. Guess what? I had one freaking out today all day long because between the construction where he lives, the change in schedules, the constant change in buses, all that, guess what? He didn't get any work done today because I was having to manage behavior all day long. That includes temper tantrums, throwing things, screaming, hitting, all of it. Guess what? We need our staff. We need to serve our kids, especially our special ed, and they're not getting what they need. I am tired of it. Teachers are tired of it. Parents are tired of it, especially me, because I've been fighting this district with mine. Guess what? I have an IEP tomorrow. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty. I am tired of having to fight for not only my kid, but also for everyone else's. Because our kids are not being served the way they need to be. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, board. My name is Karen Reyes. I'm also known as Ms. K. Currently, um, I uh, work at James Monroe School, and uh, I'm a paraprofessional for Room 61. And uh, if I can invite you guys, to, if you get some time on your schedule, please come and visit our uh, uh, autism rooms. And, and see that, you know, see the paras, you know, work. Um, I'm new to Ridgecrest, and it's an amazing city. You guys are doing an amazing job. And I work for an amazing school district. Thank you, Paul. Um, the, the, the school district is amazing, but if you could come and see some of the paras at work, you know, I know uh, paras are uh, replaceable, but not all paras. I'm a new para and my children come first, our students come first. You never know what kind of para you're going to get if they replace us, but the paras that are in the district right now, they're amazing. And even if I don't get a raise, I'll be there because these children depend on us and I grow with these children. Um, it's so gratifying, but if you guys do get the time, please come and visit, whether it's at Gateway, Monroe, but we would love to have you at Monroe. So maybe we may not get a raise this year, but if you can consider it for next year, that would be amazing. Thank you. Thank you. See one, no one else at the mic, we will close public comment at 7.57. That brings us to educational administration. I would entertain a motion to move items 6.1 through 6.12. Second. I have a motion and a second. Were there any objections to that uh, motion? Any comments anyone would like to make on any of those items, one through 12? 
I would like to, uh, to just comment that uh, if you read through this list, it is a pretty amazing list of additions for our students in programs, in materials, in um, support uh, equipment, and a, a lot of really good things going on. I, I think it is, uh, if, if someone's looking for some, some exciting reading, uh, my board has already gone through all of this reading to uh, find out exactly what this involves and what's in, in the decision-making process, but it's some pretty amazing stuff, and I, I am sorry that uh, we won't spend the time tonight that we would normally on this kind of thing, but I don't know any other way we can get through the meeting. So um, if there are no public comments on this and no board comments on this, we will call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. That brings us to policy development and review. I would suggest that we move, have a motion that would uh, move uh, one through two and four through 10, leaving three out because three is just a first reading. Move one through two and four through 10. Second. Any comments on these board policy changes? Any, policy, any comments from the public on these policy changes? If not, we'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. That brings us to 7.3, first reading of Administrative Regulation 6173.3, Education for Juvenile Court Students. Dr. Safko, thank you. Good evening, President Ferris, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Ostash, staff and community. The district has reviewed selected board policies and administrative regulations as a result of recommendations for revisions from the California School Boards Association Policy Service. The proposed administrative regulation, 6173.3, Education for Juvenile Court School Students is new for the district and board consideration. Administrative Regulation 6173.3, Education for Juvenile Court School Students is applicable for districts that maintain secondary schools. The new regulation reflects educational rights of former juvenile court school students who transition into a school district pursuant to Assembly Bill 2306. These include rights related to the immediate enrollment of such students, the immediate transfer of educational records, the transfer of coursework and credits, and exemption from district established graduation requirements under certain conditions. There are no financial implications. This is the first reading of AR 6173.3. The AR will be presented to the board for approval at the May 18 regular board meeting. Thank you. Any, any board members have comments on this first reading? Anyone from staff and community? Not, thank you very much. That will then bring us to personnel administration. I would entertain a motion on one and two. Move eight, one, eight, two. Second. I have a motion and a second on eight, one, and two. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, it is unanimous. That brings us to 8.3, which is a report to the board on the Williams Act. Any question from board members on this report? If not, the report will be received. It's just a report for information that will be received. We will move on to uh, item four, presentation of initial sunshine contract proposal for 23-24 school year from the Board of Education to the Desert Area Guidance Association. The Board of Education would like to submit their sunshine proposal to the Desert Area Guidance Association for the 2023-24 school year. Um, it is recommended, or actually the financial implications are unknown at this time, and it's the superintendent's recommendation that the board present the initial sunshine contract proposal uh, to the De Desert Area Guidance Association as presented. I don't believe there's a member here this evening, but I will be delivering these tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. That brings us to um, adoption of resolution 31 22 23 Teacher Appreciation Week and Day of the Teacher. Mr. Ald? Each May, button, sorry. Each May, certificated employees throughout California are recognized for their service to students, 
and the educational community. Resolution number 31 declares the week of May 8th through 12th, 2023 as Teacher Appreciation Week in Sierra Sands Unified School District. The resolution also designates May 9th, 2023 as Nat National Teacher Day and May 10th, 2023 as California Day of the Teacher. Adoption of this resolution designates a time when administrators, staff, parents, students, and the community have an opportunity to recognize and salute district teachers and their many contributions to our students' success. A copy of resolution number 31 will be displayed at all district schools and sites. It is the superintendent's recommendation to adopt resolution number 31 as presented and approve May 8th through 12th, 2023 as Teacher Appreciation Week, as well as May 9th, 2023 as National Teacher Day and May 10th, 2023 as California Day of the Teacher in Sierra Sands Unified School District. Move to recommended action. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? Mr. Rockwell. Uh, would it be okay if he read the Please. resolution? Whereas the contribution of contributions of teachers have been crucial in the lives of America's youth, and whereas the economic, political, and cultural well-being of this nation has been enriched through public education and its teachers, and whereas the significance of the teacher in, in the lives of students is growing as a consequence of educational reform and the change in the impact of other institutions in society, and whereas the Board of Education and citizens of the Sierra Sands Unified School District are gratified by the overall academic performance of our students who have been so well prepared by our teachers, now therefore be it resolved that the Sierra Sands Unified School District salutes its teachers and declares May 8 through 12, 2023 as Teacher Appreciation Week, May 10th, 2023 as California Day of the Teacher, and May 9th, 2023 as National Teacher Day, and be it further resolved that the Board of Education of the Sierra Sands Unified School District urges students and community members to take measures to give special meaning to this significant celebration. Thank you. Any questions or comments on resolution? Any questions or comments from the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you, Mr. All. That brings us to adoption of resolution number 29, 2223, Classified School Employees Week, May 22nd through the 26th, 2023. Every May, classified employees throughout California are recognized for their service to students and the educational community. Resolution number 29 declares the week of May 22 20 through 26, 2023, as Classified School Employee Week in Sierra Sands Unified School District. Adoption of this resolution provides an opportunity for administrators, staff, parents, students, and the community to recognize the many accomplishments and contributions of our classified staff. A copy of resolution number 29 will be displayed at all district schools and sites. It is the superintendent's recommendation that the board adopt resolution number 29 as presented and approved May 22nd through 26, 2023 as Classified School Employee Week in Sierra Sands Unified School District. And I'm happy to... It moved and seconded. Would you please read the yeah. resolution? Whereas Education Code 45460 encourages recognition of the valuable contributions classified employees make to the programs and students in the Sierra Sands Unified School District, and whereas classified employees participate in countless activities that contribute to and support a positive instructional environment, and whereas classified employees are an integral part of the educational team which provides beneficial learning, ex learning experiences for the students in the Sierra Sand Unified School District, District and whereas classified empl employees serve a vital role in providing for the welfare and safety of Sierra Sands Unified School District students, and whereas classified employees have continuously maintained an exceptional level of service to the entire educational community, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Sierra Sands Unified School District Board of Education hereby recognizes classified employees for the many services they perform and declares the week of May 22nd through 26, 2023 as the Classified School Employee Week in the Sierra Sands Unified School District. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the resolution? Mr. Rocco. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Uh what's going to come out of my mouth at the moment, but it, it seems sort of... You want to stop of, and take a second and make sure first? Yeah, or? well, I'll, be, <laughs> I'll try to be careful. No, it it's, um, seems just interesting to me that, you know, when, when this um, item comes up uh, like this after having the public comment that we did uh, tonight, uh, 
and, and that we have from time to time. And I think um, there are a lot of things that make the financial aspects of um, how we do things in the district uh, challenging. Um, and, and, and that's, that's a fact of life in California, unfortunately, that we're trying to do our best to navigate. Um, but to have our uh, staff, any of our staff, feel underappreciated or uh, like we don't care or you know whatever the words are that people want to use, um, I, I think that's patently untrue. Um, how it's demonstrated, how people want it demonstrated, you know, maybe we don't align with those things all the time, but I appreciate hearing about kind of how people are experiencing those things because that gives us something we can work on. So um, I, I, uh, I, I don't like hearing about employees who are stressed and under pre feel, uh, feel underappreciated because um, I know in here they're not. And um, so I'm, I'm thrilled that you know, this comes up every year on the calendar, but I'm thrilled that it does because it needs to. You know, we need to put out there that, no kidding, we know these people, whether it's the classified school employees or our teachers or any of the rest of our staff, um, we appreciate, you know, everything that you do. Um, and, you know, I think we need to keep looking for new ways to make sure that that's well demonstrated. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from board members? <coughs> Any questions or comments from members of the public? Then we'll vote on the adopting resolution. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. That brings us to item seven, revision of job description for confidential classified position, human resources technician. The organizational functions of the Human Resources Department have evolved to require specialized knowledge and judgment in the application of human resources, procedures, and systems. More than clerical duties and responsibilities, the human resource technician must be able to skillfully and effectively interpret human resources policies for supervisors and employees, analyze and interpret district policies for administrators, employees, and parents, possess strong communication skills, respond to critical inquiries in a timely manner, be well organized and have excellent problem solving abilities and independent or independent of regular supervisorial guidance and support the duties of the secretary to the superintendent. The, atta the attached job description reflects the current skills, experience, and analytical ca capabilities of the office personnel needed to effectively support the human resources department. There will be no change to the job's current pay range on the confidential salary schedule. It is the superintendent's recommendation the board approve the revisions to the confidential position entitled Human Resources Technician as presented. Move the recommended action. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments from board members? Any questions or comments from members of the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. That brings us to item eight, which is the approval of employment agreement for the district superintendent. In accordance with the Education Code and the Board Bylaws, one of the basic responsibilities of the Board of Education is to hire a superintendent. Upon acceptance of the resignation of the former superintendent on January 19th, 2023, the Board began the process of conducting a superintendent search for the Sierra Sands Unified School District. As a result of action taken by the Board on April 15th, 2023, to extend an employment contract to Dr. April Moore, the two parties entered into negotiations to set the terms of the conditions of Dr. Moore's employment contract. The contract commences on July 1st, 2023, and extends through June 30th, 2026. <clears throat> the annual cost and salary of the benefits could change from year to year. The specification costs are delineated in the contract and will be presented orally by myself uh, at the time of the consideration of the contract. It is recommended that the board review the contract for employment for April Moore <coughs> Doctor as uh, superintendent of the Sierra Sands Unified School District as presented and take appropriate action. So Dr. Moore's contract includes an annual salary of $225,000. The contract commences on July 1st, 2023 and continues through June 30th, 2026. The contract includes a one-time $15,000 moving stipend in addition, the contract provides Dr. Moore with access to medical, dental, and vision benefits available to the other certificated and management employees. 
The contract also includes payment for Dr. Moore's participation in two professional organizations and one service organization. Dr. Moore will also have access to the district cell phone and other district technology during the term of the contract. Dr. Moore will receive one sick day per month, two vacation days per month, the board approved holidays and personal necessity bereavement and other leaves provided to other district certificated management employees. Dr. Moore <clears throat> may also access AXA's leaders in leading the leaders program at the district expense if the board approves her participation in that program. Dr. Moore may access an outside professional advisor to serve as an executive coach for the, at the district's expense in the amount of not to exceed $15,000. Dr. Moore may access CSBA's Tier 1 and Tier 2 programs. I would like to introduce Dr. April Moore to you this evening. She is in the audience. She's uh, come to visit us today uh, here towards the front. Thank you, Dr. Moore, for being here, and thank you for accepting this position. We look forward to an exciting time in Sierra Sands as we continue to grow and you join our team. Move the recommended action. Recommended action has been moved. Second. And seconded. Any questions or comments from board members? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, Mr. Rockwell. I threatened you all earlier that I might say some more, and I, I, I will. Um, this was a, uh, th this, the search um, was very detailed. Um, there were a lot of uh, things that went into this, um, uh, you know, contrary to, I, I, I appreciate your, your concerns um, about not being as engaged as you had hoped to be, um, but there were, uh, there was a lot of feedback from a lot of uh, organizations and, and people throughout the community that, that led to mm, kind of a, I guess the, the list of qualities we wanted in a superintendent. Um, and we spent um, a lot of time with leadership associates, the consultant we, uh, we chose to help us through the, uh, the process. Um, it's, quite, uh, it's, it's quite a difficult process to find good people to interview for these jobs um, because, yeah, for a lot of reasons, but w one of them is that there are a lot of uh, opportunity there are more opportunities out there than there are people to fill them um, I think and so uh, finding a, a good fit uh, for our district um, with all the unique characteristics that we have is is um, not a simple process um, when it all boiled down we had a slate of candidates that were all uh, you know great um, and uh, as a board, we spent, um, you know, on interview day, um, would have been nice if we could have spent about half the time that we did, and I think about half the time that we spent would have been fine. We would have had great conversations, but um, at the, in the end, um, the candidates we have were, had were so good that it took, um, like I said, t about twice as long as I would have liked um, and, and an extremely long and exhausting day to, uh, to get to an uh, a end result. Um, and, and that was entirely because of the quality of the candidates that we have. So, um, you know, everyone that interviewed was, uh, had their own strengths. And um, we made, I think, a very good selection here. Um, I'm very much looking forward to uh, working with uh, Dr. Moore. Uh, I am... Uh, very sad professionally and personally to see Dr. Ostash walk out the door and I'll never forgive him for it. Um, but uh, but th it was a great uh, experience for me the way the board worked through the process and uh, had respectful dialogue about uh, what we all thought was important in the person we selected and uh, the respect that we had for each other's opinions and the way we worked through it to, uh, to come to a, what ended up being a unanimous selection. So it was a great, great experience. So thank you all for letting me be a part of that. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from board members? Any questions or comments from members of the public? Then I would call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you again, Dr. Moore.
Okay, that brings us to general administration, gifts to the district. Mr. Scott. Uh, current considerations, the following gift was received. Alta One Federal Credit Union made a cash donation of $6,032.02 to, to be divided among all the, school, all the district schools to be used at the discretion of each site administrator. Uh, donations provide support to the district and have a positive financial impact. I uh, make a motion we accept the gift as described and send appropriate letter of appreciation. We have a motion. I have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions or comments from board members? Any questions or comments from members of the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Brings us to item two, adoption of the board meeting calendar for the 23-24 school year. Dr. Ostash. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Uh, board bylaw 9320 states that regular meetings of the board be held on the first and third uh, Thursday of each month or as designated on the board meeting calendar. During the 2010-2011 school year, the board designate, designated the third Thursday of every month as the regular meeting of the Board of Education with special meetings of the board scheduled as needed. In an effort to align with requirements to submit reports to the Kern County Superintendent of Schools for review on or before the 15th day of March, the meeting date for March has been designated as the first or second Thursday of the month. The meetings are also designated by the board bylaw to be held at 7 p.m. in the Ridgecrest City Council Chambers. It is recommended that the regular board meetings for the 2023-2024 year be conducted on the following dates with, I'm going to suggest one amendment uh, recognizing that the second interim financial report must be submitted uh, and taken action on be by or before December 15. I'm recommending that we amend the December date from the 21st to the 14th, which will, which will allow to do two things at once. It will allow us to be in compliance with the second interim report and also the organizational, the annual organizational meeting has a certain specific window of time in which it must be conducted and the December 14th will um, accomplish both of those. So it'll allow um, one meeting to suffice for two requirements. So I, uh, there's no financial implication, and I recommend that the board adopt the board meeting calendar for the 2023-2024 school year as presented, with the exception of the amendment of changing the December 21 date to the December 14 date. Move the recommend. Second. Amended. It's been moved and seconded as amended. Any questions or comments from board members? Any questions or comments from members of the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. I would like to solicit a uh, motion on items three and four under general administration. Move items three and four. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments on those two items? Any questions or comments from the public on those two items? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. That brings us to construction administration, report to the board, construction activities and issues. Mr. Coy. President Ferris, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Ostash, staff and community, I'm pleased to give this update on the status of the district's construction activities. This report is presented for informational purposes only and no action is required. So our current projects we have are obviously we've been talking about the new Richmond School. We continue on the HVAC replacement and the BHS pack air handler portion is complete. Uh, we're starting into the electric bus yard, Fowler preschool with your approval of items number four and five tonight. We'll start next week. TK classrooms are also coming before you and the Fowler School fence. So that's our current uh, projects that are going. And we talked about the groundbreaking. Our most important folks, the reason we're here, our students. And you might recognize some of these folks too from the groundbreaking. And I know we're moving along tonight, so I won't go through all that. So what's happening? What's important with Richmond right now? What's the new news? Increment two was approved yesterday. That's the modular building portion. So we are moving ahead. So that was the best news I could have gotten yesterday. 
Site grading and over X continues. Site utility work begins next week. We have uh, nine bid packages that are, will be opened on April 20th, and those recommendations will be presented to you at the May 18th board meeting, along with a project milestone update. So as again, I said on these completed projects, air handlers complete, Fowler School rooftop units are complete, and installation of 12 rooftop units at Inukern was completed over the spring break. This summer, we'll continue to work on our Marbear issues that we're having at Los Forlas. We're gonna replace all HVAC units, upgrade controls, replace the library roof, and replace the MPR evaporative coolers with HVAC units. Pierce School replace all HVAC units, upgrade controls, and make structural repairs to building A and B, and in your current school, complete the installation and control upgrades. Our electric bus yard, Edison is complete. You may notice this picture is Looks a little the same, but there's a transformer there. So Edison completed their work. And with the approval of five contracts tonight, we'll begin work on, um, I have 514. I think we might start sooner than that. But we'll begin work shortly on that yard. Just a quick question, since comment was came up earlier on, on the uh, with the buses. Will this charge faster than what we're currently charging now? I, I don't have an electric vehicle, so I, I don't understand the difference between a, uh, I mean, sometimes you're charging with a 110 or you know, I've heard superchargers. So will this give the ability to, for our buses to charge at a faster rate? Or is this the same as what we're currently charging now? Maybe I'm, you're not the, aware. Well, I, I was involved with the selection of the units and a lot of that was part of our agreement with Edison and they're smart charging units that'll charge off peak. Okay. They're not a terribly high voltage unit for each one, but it was what was recommended from the bus manufacturer and what was approved by Edison. So they gave us a list of three or four units to select from and, and part of it, part of their rate structure is, is to be charging off peak. So I know that doesn't directly answer yeah, your yeah, question, but, you, you, but. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You, you, you understand what I'm trying to say. It's, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out after. I, 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 I wouldn't have brought it up, only a no. comment was made and it. Yeah, I, I don't, we're not looking at a supercharger type of, this is more of an overnight process to charge. Okay, well, I'll, I'll chat with you after the meeting. Well, I think based on the, I think based on the, the, the comment earlier, it'd be, it would be interesting to know kind of the, the uh, capability of the charging infrastructure we have today versus what, what this will be if it's different. Um, I guess from what I heard, I hope it's different. Uh, yeah, so I, I just don't know if the bus was charged up, if, if they're having to stop driving halfway through the day, if that bus was charged to 100% battery capacity and was not being able to make those rounds or if it just wasn't being charged to 100% and had to bring it back, so. Right. Well, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, it's a little out of the scope of the yeah. construction update, but yeah, I, that was my yeah. concern too, is my recollection when we selected these electric like, electric buses that the uh, range on them was much longer than what I sort of got from what I heard today. So a it's a conversation for a different time. Different time. <laughs> right. yes. I'll, yeah. I'll okay. gather some information and I'll report back. As I mentioned, the Fowler uh, preschool playground will begin on Monday with approval of items four and five. A another item that's on there, 10.2, TK classrooms. We're attempting to uh, install two more TK classrooms over the summer. And the, that will go, the site work for that project will go as an over-the-counter to DSA on May 18th. And with our Fowler fencing project, we're awaiting DSA approval. It uh, went in as an over-the-counter, but went to back check. And once approved, we'll release the, the package on that. So any questions? Any other questions on the report? Any questions on the report from the public? If you'd like to come up to the microphone, give us your name and your question. Thank you.
Good evening. Beth McCain, Pierce School teacher, almost 39 years. I just wondered where the two TK classrooms were going. Happy to, happy to answer that. One will go to Las Flores and the other to Fowler School. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then that brings us to the rest of construction administration. I would like to solicit a motion for two through eight with the extraction of seven. Move with two through eight with the extraction of seven. Second. Any questions or comments on those items? I would just like to comment that there's a lot of good work going on here and a lot of improvements to our district's facilities and appreciate the hard work and the, uh, the rate at which it's being applied. Um, it's pretty impressive. Thank you, pretty impressive. Any other questions or comments from board members? Questions or comments from members of the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Brings us to 10.7, adoption of resolution number 32-22-23, authorizing staff approval of change orders up to $50,000 for the Richmond replacement project. Mr. Coit. On October 4th, 2007, the board adopted administration regulation 33-12, contracts, which authorizes the superintendent or his designee to approve contracts up to $10,000 in value. During the Murray replacement project, 27 additive change orders, COs, were presented. Of the 27 additive COs processed, 18 required board approval. Since the completion of the Murray project, construction costs have escalated approximately 34%. Due to the comparability of the Murray project to the Richmond project and the escalation construction costs, it is probable that there will be additive change orders associated with the Richmond project and that the value of those change orders will be greater than they were for the Murray project. Mm -hmm. District staff in consultation with legal counsel has determined that it will cause unnecessary and disruptive delays to require the board to approve all additive change orders before the district authorizes the commencement of the additional work required. The attached resolution delegates the authority to execute all change orders and include additional work necessary to complete the project at individual values up to $50,000 to the assistant superintendent of business. The resolution- I'm sorry, your time is up. Okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I'll go faster. <laughs> the resolution also states that that the approved change orders will also be presented to the board in a summary during the month of the construction status report. There are no financial implications associated with the board item. Approval of this resolution will prevent delays in the construction pending board approval of required change orders. So I would say that's a financial implication. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was going to say there better not be a financial, <laughs> financial implication from that. Okay, do uh, let's see. I don't move problem. recommended action. Thank you. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on this? I think I need to apologize to our new superintendent, though. I read my first sentence in that, and I said the superintendent or his designee. So. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's accurate today. <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> that's accurate today. You, are you kicking me out already? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, because. <laughs> She's going to be here. I'm sure Dr. Moore will see some of those change orders <laughs> as they come through. You're not going to be finished by July? No. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rockwell, you just look like you're getting ready to say something. I was thinking about it. I, I just, I'm, I'm relatively. You could have just kept going. <laughs> I'm just I'm relatively engaged in this, the construction going on on the base. And, and I can certainly attest to the fact that. You know the construction industry is nuts, and you got to move fast, and you got to, you know, be ready to make changes at the drop of a hat. And and yeah, I can't, I can't, and and the dollars are bigger and bigger all the time, and I just can't fathom, you know, having to hold the uh, the process up to a ten thousand dollar limit. Um, 
and, and expect to get anywhere, uh, it would be a mess. So this is, this is a good, good plan. Okay, any other questions or comments from board members? I know I just find over the years, all the numbers look so much bigger than they used to. <laughs> that yeah. is just scary. Yeah. But we got a whole lot more back in 2007 for $10,000. <laughs> <000. laughs> so uh, any other questions or comments from members of the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Coy. Okay, uh, that brings us to business administration. I would entertain a motion for one through three. Move the 11, one through 11, three. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments from board members? I would just like to comment that, um, again, Stuff not to spend the appropriate time on all these things. That, uh, but uh, uh, sometimes you have to move when you have to move. But I, in reading 11.1, uh, I was impressed by the fact that we're addressing the needs to keep our campuses safe and to provide uh, processes to uh, get the appropriate help when we need it. At the same time, I was a little sad in my heart that this is the kind of thing we're we're talking about in today's world. Um, and recognizing that part of me says, this is the kind of thing that doesn't happen here, but you hear that by, in almost every circumstance where it does happen. And we certainly don't want to be in that circumstance, but is the way the world is these days. So on that happy note, any com other questions or comments from the public? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. I will now temporarily adjourn the meeting of the Sierra Sands Unified School District Board of Education to convene the meeting of the Unicorn Schools Financing Authority Board of Directors. Uh, any changes on the agenda, sir? No changes. If there are no changes, the only item on the agenda was the confirmation of the minutes. If there are no objections, they will stand as presented. And I will adjourn the meeting of the Unicorn Schools Financing Authority Board of Directors meeting and reconvene the meeting of the Sierra Sands Unified School District Board of Education to entertain a motion on the consent calendar. Move the entire consent calendar. Second. The consent calendar has been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? Any questions or comments from members of the public? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Any call for any future agenda items? Hearing none, we will adjourn. The next regular meeting of the Board of Education is May 18th. And again, I want to welcome and thank uh, Dr. April Moore for joining us this evening. <laughs>